Hello everybody. It is Sunday and so we want to spend a little bit of time in the Gospels. And so if you want to turn with me, if you have your Bible or you can listen along and we're going to be in Matthew chapter 9, picking up in verse 18 where we left off last Sunday. And we have been see, we have seen Jesus, been watching him go around and uh, teaching the people powerfully, masterfully. Uh, Jesus has been performing all kinds of miracles, uh, showing himself, proving himself to be the Christ, to be the Messiah, the Son of God who has come to this earth. And Jesus, by the grace and mercy and power of God, has been healing so many people, casting out demons, doing all kinds of miraculous things. And that's what we're going to see even more of tonight. And so in uh, previously in chapter 9... We had seen Jesus heal a paralytic um, and had even forgiven him of his sins. And then we saw Jesus call Matthew, uh, called Matthew to follow him. And then we talked about that and uh, how uh, Jesus came to be the great physician, to seek and to save the lost, to call sinners to repentance. Um, and so we talked about that. Well, now we're going to try to finish chapter 9 today. Uh, with it being Sunday, I want to look at the Gospel of Matthew, beginning in chapter 9 and verse 18, that while Jesus spoke these things to them, while Jesus was uh, teaching the people, this is actually after, uh, while Jesus had been at Matthew's house at a, at a feast with tax collectors and sinners and the Pharisees uh, were complaining about that, and then a question was brought up about fasting well, then while Jesus was speaking to the people, teaching them these, about these things, behold, a ruler came and worshiped Jesus, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. I mean, wow, just, you know, this random man, as far as we know, uh, this man who happened to be a ruler, a ruler came and worshiped Jesus, praised Jesus, coming to him and of all things says, my daughter has died, but if you will come and lay your hand on her, she will live. What faith, what shocking faith that here is a man has come, his daughter has died, but he believes that if Jesus comes and lays his hand on her, his daughter will live again. That is awesome faith seen in this man. So Jesus arose and followed this man, and so did the disciples of Jesus. And suddenly, as Jesus is making his way with this ruler to go save this child who has died, to raise her from the dead, suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched just the hem, the edge of his garment. For she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. Again, what amazing faith we see in someone. Here now a woman with a, a health problem, with a disease for 12 years, and she believes that if she comes and if she just touches his garment, that she will be healed. So we see a man coming, believing Jesus can raise his daughter from the dead. We see a woman thinking she can, or having faith and thinking she can be healed just by touching the garment of Jesus. But Jesus turned around and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. And so she, because of her faith, because of her great faith in Jesus, Jesus blessed her by healing her, even though all she did was touch the hem of his garment. And then the woman was healed from that very hour. And then in verse 23, when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing again in the death of this child, he said to them, make room for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they began to ridicule Jesus because he said she is sleeping. Now, Jesus knew Jesus. He didn't literally mean that, oh, she's not actually dead. She's just sleeping. I'm going to tap her on the shoulder and she'll wake up. 
Jesus was using that expression to give them hope, to give them faith, to see what he was about to do. He was about to raise her from the dead. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in, he took her by the hand, and the girl arose. She came back from the dead. She came back to life. And the report of this went out into all the land. Of course it did. Jesus has just raised a a girl from the dead. And he has healed a woman of her disease just by the woman's faith and touching his garment. And now he raises someone from the dead. Well, then we see more examples of faith and healing. That when Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him crying out, saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he came into the house and the blind, or when he came, had come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. They're asking him, have mercy on us. They're blind. They want Jesus to heal them. Jesus questions them. He says, do you actually believe that I can do this? And they say, yes, they believe Jesus can heal them of their blindness. And Jesus touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Another example of great faith. And their eyes were opened and Jesus sternly warned them saying, see that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him and all that country. No, they didn't listen very good. But more reports were made about what Jesus had been doing, the amazing miracles, healing a woman of disease, raising a girl from the dead, giving blind men their sight back. And now, verse 32, as they went out, behold, they brought to Jesus a man who was mute and demon-possessed. Well, this is going to be interesting And when the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke, and the multitudes marveled, saying, it was never seen like this in Israel. And that's exactly what their response should have been, that excitement, that marveling, that, wow, look at what Jesus is doing. He must be the Christ. But there were still those who were stubborn and hard-hearted, who didn't believe. The Pharisees said, Ah, he just cast out demons by the ruler of demons. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. And Jesus, you know, debunked that myth um, on this occasion or another like it when they were claiming and charging him with that. So that's not, that doesn't make sense. It's not possible. It just doesn't make sense. And it's not true. Jesus was doing good by the will and power of God, performing these great miracles. And then finally, in verse 35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And so here's Jesus going around, continually traveling around, teaching the people, healing people. But when he saw the multitudes, Jesus was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. I mean, this finally it weighed on Jesus. It hit Jesus. He is getting weary and tired of seeing these weary and tired people. It, it, it hurts him in his heart. They're like sheep without a shepherd. And he says to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Jesus has compassion on all these people. And he tells his disciples, there is so much to do. There's so much work. There are so many souls that need him, need Jesus, need his word, need message of hope and joy and salvation. And he wants his disciples to be busy and active in that work and to be praying for the Lord to bless their work and to send out more and more laborers. And may you and I listen to that call, listen to that plea of Jesus, that still the harvest is plentiful. But where are the laborers? We've got to be the laborers, you and I, whatever, in, in whatever capacity, however much we can be. 
to spread the good news of salvation to all people, the good news of Jesus Christ, our Messiah, our Christ, the Lord, the Son of God, our Savior, our King, who in Him alone is salvation. And we need to be spreading that message. So let's continue to increase in faith by seeing these miracles Jesus is doing and listening to the teachings he has given and answer that call for more laborers to get busy saving souls and giving glory to God. Well, we'll stop there for today. Next week, we'll pick up in chapter 10. But let's grow in faith. Let's grow in hope. Let's grow in love. May God be blessed. May God be praised in all that we do. And may God bless us in all that we do to his glory. Have a great week. God bless. I love you all.